Okay, so for refined painting, instead of using the default brush, I'm going to show you how to create a new brush. And the way I do that in Photopea is to say File New, create a new project that you're going to use your name. So I'm going to do sp24-free and my name and brush. And I want you to set it in pixels to be a thousand by a thousand pixels. That's a good default size for brush design. Doesn't matter the DPI because you're setting the exact pixels on a white background. You say create. Now you're going to use your brush, the same one you were using before. You're going to use the default black on white. And paint brushes, you're going to make it pressure sensitive. Paint brushes come in kind of two main families. One looks like this. This is what's called a soft round brush. Another type looks like this. This is called a flat brush, right? And they come in two densities. If they're made of sable, which is like a minx fur, or a synthetic kind of nylon-based sable, then they're incredibly absorbent and incredibly soft. Uh, but if they're made of horsehair, they're a bristle brush, sometimes hog's hair. And that means they're really rough and give you like these really dry textural marks. Now, if you take the top of this brush, I'll do it with fluorescent green here. And you dip the top of this brush in paint or ink. And then you take a piece of paper, square piece of paper, and you push the brush against the paper like a stamp, you'll get a brush design. So that brush, if I were to push it against the paper, would look like this at 45 degree angle. Because from the side, that brush is thin like this, right? And so it's directional. Right? That's the mark it would leave on the paper. This brush, though, from the side, it looks the same like it does from the other side. It would leave a more circular mark like this, right? that you push against the paper. Neither of these brushes would give you a perfect shape like a default brush in Photopea or Photoshop. They wouldn't give you a perfect rectangle. They wouldn't give you a perfect circle. Because of the hair, they're always going to be a little bit off on the edges. And that's how you can get something that mimics more a digital paintbrush. So I'm going to delete all of that, fill it with white, basically start over. And now with this brush, I'm going to create the brush I want to make my bird painting with. And I'm going to do something that's kind of in between the two. It's not going to be a perfectly round brush. It's going to be slightly directional in a 45 degree angle, like this. And it's going to be built up in the middle, but it's going to be fairly bristly. So I'm going to have lots of like hard lines at the edges, and then even a little bit of splatter outside of those edges. And I want it to be more of an oval than a rectangle. I think that will help with my bird. Now, if you're doing like an animal with fur rather than feathers, or if you're doing a person, you can think of the texture that you want your brush to create. Okay, so this brush already has opacity built into it. You see there's places that are denser, and you want the middle to be pretty dense, and then places where it loosens up. Then I'm going to swap the color, so I'm painting with white. And I'm going to break it up a little bit. So it's just getting the tip of the brush instead of being super loaded with ink. At the edges as well. It's kind of like you're, you're making one of those little soot spirits from Spirited Away. Yes. So we're going to use this to define the brush shape. And so many of those brushes that you use from from Patreons or from influencers or ones you find online or even ones that you purchase, some of these artists 
uh, make a lot of money on selling their their brush files the brush shape is nothing special it's all about how you set the settings on the brush that matter so that's why kind of creating your own is a good skill to have okay so this is my brush how do I turn it into something that I can use as a brush I go to edit scroll down to where it says define new and say brush click on brush and now the brush has been added so let's try this brush out I'm gonna fill fill it with white right and then I'm just gonna tap once with my brush and because I'm painting with white nothing happens but if I switch it back to black I tap once and I get my brush but I have it set at only 73 percent opacity make sense if I set it to be pressure sensitive, then I can tap lightly and get a small version of the brush. Now this isn't great because what happens if I make it smaller like I would for painting my bird, even though it's pressure sensitive, and then paint with it, it still looks like a pretty boring brush. And that's because its settings have it all locked. So it's locked at the exact same angle. So next, I go to window and I open up my brush settings and you'll see that along with the brush you select which you can also see here these are all the brush shapes this is my new one it's right at the end of the catalog here I have these these brush settings so you get to brush settings by going to window brush to open this up the ones you want to play with are tip dynamics the most important is the angle jitter. That's going to make it so it's not always locked at the same angle. I like to play with size jitter a little bit. I like to play with minimal diameter a little bit. I like to play with roundness quite a bit. That kind of tapers it. And now if I make the brush a little bit smaller, right, and play with it, you can see how that angle jitter really varies its edge. And as it builds up with opacity, this has become, become a much more useful tool. If that angle jitter is a little unpredictable, I can take it down. There we go. So the whole point is to get some, some roughness at the edge so it overlaps at different opacities. And then to also get... A little bit of directionality to the stroke so you can tell if you're moving it up and down or if you're moving it left to right now under control I always put pin pressure but that's also set right there And you can put angle jitter, control direction, but that's going to depend on the type of tablet you have. And our tablets don't support what's called tilt and twirl, but more expensive tablets do and styluses do. All right. So the only problem is it's the settings that really matter. When I move to my project, I try to use this brush already selected I want to make sure that those tip dynamics are still set right and then as soon as I save my project it will save that brush if I was logged into Photopea <laughs> and I let's see am I logged in no but I just might recreate a brush next time instead of dealing with logging in and that's the same in Photoshop as well it's just under Photoshop, it's Edit Define Brush Preset. Now I have a brush to use for my... Actually, I'll go ahead and just save this. Go back to my history before I, I whited it out. I think it's too late for that. Never mind. But now I have a brush I can use for my refined painting. And you're not required to make your own brush. And you can use some of these other brushes that are built into it. But 
what really matters is are those tip dynamics. You can play with the others, but trust me, it's the tip dynamics that matter for direct painting. Okay, now I'm going to work on a refined paint layer on top of my base painting, and I might take the opacity on my base painting down a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Now, refined paint, you might zoom in a little bit. I'm going to work at a, an opacity of closer to 50% or 60%. And now when I steal a color, holding down option again, and I start painting, now I've got that textured brush, and it really helps show the direction. And I really want to have fun with my colors. And once I pick a color, I might want to paint it off to the side in full opacity. So that as these colors get mixed and mixed and mixed, they don't get too diluted. Just like you pick up paint from a palette. These are all things that can be helpful to me. You want a darkest dark. And it's always tempting when you're doing something with eyes to start by detailing the eye and then kind of work around from there. But really, you just want to try to hit everything, not just the most interesting parts. And you want to build it, even though you're using a smaller brush and you're being more refined, you want to build it with a lot of energy. So one way to see what you're doing is just to turn off your base painting. And I think I'm going to take the opacity up on my base painting so I can steal more of those colors. Right. So I can take it up to 100%. And now what I'm really trying to do is render it. Now... With the refined paint, you're going to be zoomed in a lot. So a tool that helps is called the Navigator. You'll find it under Window. And the Navigator will always show you the full image. And it can help you without having to change tools, move around without even having to hold the space bar. And it will help you zoom in without having to go off of your brush tool. But it will also show you your references. So now I can just use my, on my refined paint layer, just use my Option key, Steel Colors. Paint it in. And kind of see how that's affecting the whole image. And because I'm closer to 50% than 100%, each time I overlay colors, they start to mix together. And so then I can steal the resulting color that the overlap gives me. So it's a, a nice way of blending without having to soften edges, just by using gradients of the color. Now, if I'm going for photorealism, you do this a lot. But remember, I have all of these kind of crazy references. So that doesn't mean I always have to use the same approaches and the same colors in the same places. I might want some of these kind of different colored strokes on top. And to use a little bit of the color everywhere. Think full spectrum. But what I definitely want to do is eventually cover up all of that base color layer with this more textural, intentional brushwork. And it's the difference between something that looks digital and something that looks like real paint, like this William de Kooning.